Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we'll be talking about how you can use your landscape photography lenses best, namely those telephoto lenses like your 70 to 200s, right after this. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the video. I'm David Johnson and on this channel, we talk landscape photography, taking you out into the field, showing you how to shoot different things, post processing techniques and gear reviews. So if you're new here or if you're into landscape photography at all, consider subscribing below. Sorry about that, slight camera malfunction, consider subscribing below. Now in this video specifically, we're gonna be talking about how you can use those telephoto lenses best for landscape photography. Namely those 70 to 200 lenses, which are the like primo lenses you can use in the telephoto genre of landscape photography lenses. Now, if you're like me, when you started out with landscape photography, you just slapped a wide angle lens on the end of your camera and ran around snapping photos of everything, thinking you could only use that one lens for your landscape photos. What I didn't realize is the power and the usefulness of a telephoto lens. Now, if I only had one lens to shoot with during the day for landscape photography, I would honestly choose a 70 to 200. I did a video recently on if I only could choose one lens. I didn't choose a 70 to 200 by the way because night photography matters too. Here's that video if you want to see which lens I would choose if I only had one to choose for landscape photography. But how do you use those telephotos, those 70 to 200s to capture amazing landscape photos? Well they're very specific in use. Now, I love the landscape look with the 70 to 200 because of the way that the 70 to 200s and telephotos overall are designed. They're really cool when you think about their design and what you can do with them. So let's understand how they work, what they do, and then what you can shoot with them. So number one, what do they do to an image or a scene when you use a 70 to 200? they compress distances together and magnify the magnitude of something. So I like to use 70 to 200s when I'm trying to capture larger subjects like big portraits of mountain faces or larger subject matter, but I'm also trying to use 70 to 200s when I'm trying to compress distances together. Now, if you think about compressing distances, here's what I mean. Take for example, this photograph that I shot in Lone Pine, California in the Alabama Hills, I was trying to compress the distance between road and mountain. And I think I did a pretty good job. So you compress distances that are further together and the 70 to 200 brings those closer together. The mountain range behind this road was pretty far off. It's the Western range of Death Valley National Park. Whenever you go out there, you'll see what I mean. But it compressed the area of space between the mountain range and the road allowing me to kind of like stack subjects on top of subjects and create this visual effect of that they seem closer together. That's why I love the 70 to 200 so, so much. It's really fun to use this effect when you're taking smaller detail shots in nature of things that look cool together, like patterns that may look good together. Now, there's some good ideas for taking images with telephoto lenses, like the patterns or compressing distances. I also like to use my 70 to 200s at those huge vistas or overlooks, because you can also create like panoramas with them. You can also create compressed mountain stacks with them with sunrises in the background like this photograph in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And also 70 to 200s allow you to think more creatively about your photography. I think wide angle lenses kind of pinhole photographers into one specific look, but you can do so much more with 70 to 200s that's why if I had to choose a lens just to use in daytime photography, I'd pick the 70 to 200 because I honestly think it's more versatile, it magnifies subject matter and landscapes more, and it allows me to be more creative as a photographer using this lens. That's why I love my 70 to 200s and I love going out to shoot with them and being a little more creative 
in landscape photography. Now I make these videos, number one, to inform you and help you and kind of try to break you out of the mold of just standard landscape photography. I wanna get you thinking about your own style, but I also make these videos so that you can think differently about photography overall and think smarter about what type of photograph would look good with what type of lens. You're the photographer, you control the lens and the camera, it doesn't control you or pigeonhole you into a specific shot. So think differently about your landscapes. And here's the question of the day. If you've ever used a 70 to 200, which one is your favorite? Comment below with those answers. If you like this video at all or found it useful, don't be shy, hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing below if you're into landscape photography at all, or you can continue watching. Here's a video I did on how you can use wide angle lenses best for your landscape photography. And here's a video that YouTube is suggesting that you watch based on the search terms that you've already searched.